Hey, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys for tuning into the podcast today because we're going to have a special guest on the show. In fact, we're going to take it back to a video that never actually got published. I'm going to have a special guest or two on the show, one of them being Christian Anto, another strength and conditioning coach and personal trainer who has coached thousands and thousands of people and worked with some of the biggest names in the fitness industry, including Dave Tate and brands like Elite FTS. So I want you guys to sit back, grab a pen and a paper, and take some notes because we're going to cover some really, really interesting topics. Hope you guys are having a great day, and thanks again for watching. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's Brett Summers. We're here at the Top Shop, and we got a special guest today, Christian Anto, one of the best dudes I know. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> Elite FTS sponsored athlete, power lifter, fiance. Yeah. Soon to be husband. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shout outs to Julia. Three weeks out. Three weeks out. Not from competition, but from a bigger day. Yeah. Yes, much bigger. Which one makes you more nervous? Um, wedding. The wedding? wedding? Yes, with yeah. all. I don't you feel like you're going to be, you're probably nervous when you're by yourself, not when you're with her. Yeah, because there's a lot of stuff to think about. Like, when you're by yourself. Right. What right. are you thinking about? Right now, all the what? wedding stuff and all the stuff that has gone wrong, and then what you got to do to figure it out. See, okay, I'm going to say this right now. Dave Tate always talks about anything in the gym can be applied to outside right, life. Right, right. It is literally the same thing. You are presented with a problem. You got to step back and you got to figure it out. We do this stuff every day, all day, programming. Right. You have issues with clients and structure and all that kind of stuff. Planning a wedding, I'm, I'm gonna be very careful with my words. <laughs> yeah, wait, 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 yeah, it ain't the same, <laughs> it ain't the same, but there are lots of similarities with planning a wedding and planning out someone's training progressions for X amount of weeks. Give me a couple, give me a couple examples. Scheduling, timing. If you're planning for a powerlifting meet, you have to have them peak for that one day at that one time to perform to their best you are timing multiple people doing multiple different jobs. Film crew, one, pictures, food, it. caterer. Uh, who, who's who's doing the host? Like what? What do they call it? The officiant? Oh, yeah. the, 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 the official yep, the pastor. The yep, pastor, all whoever's that stuff. doing the deal. And everybody has to sync up together, exactly. and you get one day to get them all in the same room yeah. and go. This is a plan. Break everything else yeah. is via text message, phone call, email. It's it's yeah. a lots of similarities. Yeah, your best lots. man is your is your handler. Yep. Right. Yep. Is somebody Take gonna have this. a chalk bowl for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, somebody's gonna be up there with a chalk bowl Nose and just a, a couple. Of, yeah, a little torque, a little a little ammonia to get you rolling. <laughs> I like it. That's what you'll have to do before it. Dude, that that makes for a good, good idea. You'd get a lot of views. That would be, yeah, that would be right? You might get a couple extra followers. Right? That's what it's all about anyways. Why get married <laughs> for any other reason? <laughs> IG followers, baby. So, oh, so we got that stuff out of the way. Now we're going to pin Christian with a couple of quick questions. We didn't plan this out. Nope. We didn't plan this out. Not at all. But we got you here. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to hit you with five questions. What is one of the things that irks you about what people are putting out that are strength and conditioning coaches that put out that just gets you that doesn't really explain the whole story about coaching or programming so we were well, just talking about this yeah. in our training yeah Blair if you need this you just I will I will answer that general and then I'll go over topics that are a little bit more specific to to my area of expertise okay from a general answer to that question the way I was raised in this industry is the fitness industry is awesome, but you have two bubbles. You have an inner circle or an inner bubble, and then encapsulating that one is a larger bubble or a larger circle, okay? okay. The individuals that know what's going on are on that inner bubble. Right. Okay. You have a bunch of people in that outer bubble that don't know what's going on, but know enough to make them dangerous, if you will, right. and then you have everybody else that doesn't know about the fitness industry on the outside. We have to, as being inner bubble people that know what's going on, have to sift through that outer bubble and capture those individuals and bring them in into an environment and raise them in this industry so they are safe, they know what they're doing, and they don't need to rely on us. Okay, okay? I like that. The downside of that is there are some people in that inner circle that are keeping people on that outer bubble. So you are facing an uphill battle of a bunch of people 
in that outer bubble and a few people in that inner bubble that are making it harder to get out good information, harder to reach, because you're gonna find that us as coaches, right, right. you're fixing a lot. Yep. Because you have individuals that finally get on a right I saw path. this, I saw that, I right. heard this, or oh, I just read this today, whatever it would be. Some people a, come in with that. Correct. Yep. And it's a blessing in and of itself that they were able to find your front door in the first place. Right. Or else they could have severely gotten hurt. Right. Now, Elite FTS, that's one of the big things that Elite Huge. is educate, educating. What's their slogan? What's the slogan? Well, uh, live, learn, on. and pass on. Live, yeah, 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 yeah. That one, that yep. one. And I like that because that's, you know, they're trying to educate. Absolutely, and all the content they put out is free. There's free programs, there's free content. You could literally, any topic that you find in the exercise sports science world, if you're going to school for it, or if you're in the fitness industry in general, you will find information regarding even CrossFit, powerlifting, yep. strongman. Football. Football. Uh, baseball, athletics, basketball, volleyball, every, soccer. There was a program that was for free put out for gymnastics and figure skating yep. on Elite FTS. How like, about how about uh, when he does the, or Tate, I don't know if he is the one who pushes it, but for... 44 programs at work at the yes. holidays. At the holidays. Which all the money gets donated, I believe, to children. Make a wish foundation. Make a wish, right? But in that, it's it's covering you know all different sports. Yes. And Julia had <laughs> had one on there about like uh, flexible dieting yep. on there. I remember and those types of things. But I would say, or um, the question would be, are you better off? scrolling the Elite FTS website for an hour than following almost anyone that you find on Instagram. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because to, for, free. Else, for free. For free. For, uh, let's compare it not just to scrolling, but like the buy my ebook. Yes. Which one are you better off doing? Let's, 10 minutes on Elite FTS or buying uh, buy now, two spots left ebook? Okay. So if you buy an ebook, buy now, two spots left, it's going to be one methodology. You spent 20 bucks. Right. I think the, pr the book, if you scroll and literally type in programs that work, you will have a choice of six, six books of programs that work with over a hundred pages, okay, of programming that will go over that, whatever sport you want, whatever fitness discipline that you want, within 10 seconds of typing that in, you have a list of over, that's over 600 programs. I just, I don't understand it. It's, it's like people want to be in a fad. People want to be doing the coolest thing. Right. The funniest thing is no programming is new. Everything has been around for decades, Everything's decades. And it's just being redistributed, remarketed. Which and everyone's cool. like, which, which is, is cool. Is, which Cause is it'll fine. get capture your attention differently. But like even on there, how to start a garage gym on there. Yes. Joe, Joe DeFranco and, and many other gym owners have put on there. 10 things to avoid, yep. 20 things to avoid. Don't hire the subcontractors if they don't know what they're doing, this, that, the other. So you can go on there on Elite FTS, which you write columns on, right? You have a column on there? Blog. A blog on there. You can follow his stuff too, which is, I'd say, worth thousands and thousands of dollars, right? I went to school for it, so I'm yeah. everything that I know, I'm putting out that I've learned from school, that I've implemented on myself. Did you learn more in school or did you learn more under the bar? <clears throat> and from the people like Dave and the people at the... at. It's, at seminars and pat, like pass on knowledge. It, it's, it's really hard to compare them. Different I, types I'll, of knowledge, right? right. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll structure this answer like this. You have GPP, which yep. is a general physical, physical preparedness. Yeah. I will say school is like GPP. And then all of my mentors became stacks. more specific to what I fell into. So it's the bottom of the pyramid essentially. Yeah, exactly. And then everything stacks on it's top a, of that. It's a Because without, without the elementary, Basic knowledge. Okay, yes. I like that. Without the understanding, you can't build a good pyramid. It will be very short and it wouldn't be structured well. Just like being a doctor or I've seen plenty of people that went to school with me that when they got under an internship, they literally crashed and burned. Right. They, just okay. because you understand the concepts doesn't mean you know how to implement them. Or okay? lead or leadership because they leadership. don't even go into that in school. Yes. So, and this is the crazy part. I've talked to plenty of people that are in school, now in school, and this is only a five year difference. They're worried about health and wellness. They're not worried about strength. And all of that, strength as a base is gonna help everything else progress. Yeah, like during school, like, we're, I mean, it's not that it's not, obviously, it's not something we can't use, obviously it is, but like say I'm in exercise physiology currently, and we just, basically go through what's on paper. We don't do any of the actual reality of it. Like 
being one on one, being yep. in group work stuff. So the stuff that, that like, yeah, exactly, we, that stuff doesn't get talked about nope. at all. Nope. And that being able to learn and apply these things, the only way that's going to happen is if you do an internship. Right. You can't jump into this field and just be like, oh, I got it. Not going to happen. You will crash and burn. You will get eaten alive because you have to be able to see people, adjust people, because nobody is the same. Right. I don't care what a piece of paper says. You can have as many general guidelines as you want. General guidelines are not going to apply to an individual that has a frozen shoulder, that has heart issues, that has some type of disease. Any, any and all of those things apply. And that's going to happen with a needs analysis or some type of analysis to understand your clients which is gonna get me on another rant of all these things of now everything is computer based mm -hmm. and remote and you are distancing yourself yeah, from your further, clientele. Further, further. Like I better have touches on every single one of my clients. I better see what they're doing. I better know what they're doing. and I better hear what they're doing. And that, that's like such a good point. Everything that you just said. So first, I, I firmly believe I would have been very lost if I didn't come to Top Barn. Yeah. Thanks to Gary V for telling me to go and find an internship sure. and learn that by myself. Yeah. So I reached out to Brett and I did get the internship, you know, it wasn't formal or anything. He told me just to come in, I could start learning, learn plenty of stuff. I wouldn't have known about people being in bad health, how to like, how to like change it up for specific individuals, things like that. And then also like you were just saying, when I was thinking, so I, I wanted to personal, be a personal trainer, athletic trainer, like for a long time, I just never like, jumped out to go do it since sure. like like early high school probably when I first started and um like basically it's just like I don't know I was just I just didn't want to be the one that the one that couldn't meet everybody's expectations yep. and so when I come here I understand how you do everything for that individual and a lot of the people online are Instagram people that just talk, talk, you know, give you the good and bad like things are doing a lot of online training. And not that that's bad, because like what we were talking about, you do have online clients, yep. but you've already been there with them, train them like one-on-one -on -one already. Mm -hmm. And when I think about um, online training, you don't have that connection with the person. You can't see them daily. You can't you can ask over text or maybe FaceTime like how their day went, but you can't really see yeah, that. That'd be, that'd, be, that'd be one of my questions for you. It's like, as a coach, how, how important do you think it is to make adjustments? I feel like as a coach's job, your job, the reason they've got you is to make adjustments Absolutely. on different variables. The training variable, the diet variable, the stress variable, oh, whatever yeah. it is. Like how can the online coaching, unless you have that experience, unless there is an, an understanding you know, just for 150 bucks a month, if I send you here, do this sets and reps, right. are they pushing it? Are they straining? Right. Is their form right? What are they doing? So I see the flaws and it's, I'm glad everybody wants to get in shape. I'm not going to salt anybody for trying to put something out there that's going to help somebody. I do salt the trainers though, that are just putting out online trainers. They're just putting out programs, trying to get a hundred people because they've got a little influence, mm -hmm. get a hundred people in. And how do you give a hundred people that you don't even see appropriate coaching $150 is quite a bit to some people it is and this is where this is where individuals kind of separate themselves and and have a better following or have a better grasp of coaching the way I like to look at it is you can put out a general template a general template will aid people in getting from point A to point B yes. because general strength if someone has never done it before even if they look at sets and reps, they will progress because they inadvertently are going to hit variables that they haven't been hitting before. Correct. Okay. There's certain nutrition plans out there and dietary guidelines like Jenny Craig. It's on a points based yeah. system. They are focusing on one aspect of nutrition. Yep. If you focus on one aspect of strength and dial it in, you're going to have some general results. Like, like a muscle and fitness magazine, Correct. right? I used to make gains off of it. Sure. They put a workout in. They put the food diet in there. Right. They'd say, here, eat all these things if you're trying to gain. And I'd eat it all in abundance mm -hmm. and I'd see progress, but at a certain point. Exactly. But if you do that over and over and over again, guess what? Your body is an adaptive organism. It's going to adapt and say, huh, I know what this, I know what's yep. going to happen next. Like I, we're good now. 
okay? You need stimulus. You need that extra stimulus. You need to strain to make your body adapt. So for me personally, online training and online coaching, I put time in all the time making videos. That's why I have a YouTube channel. I know that's why you have a YouTube channel. I'll link channel. it up. I'll link it up right you, here. Should be pulling up right now. There is a physical section in my YouTube that's instructional. Yeah. Not just me. I am going to other people's YouTube and grabbing good instructional videos and posting them in mine. So now you have a data bank of information that if I say, hey, you don't understand this concept, bam. Now you have a visual presentation of what I want you to do. I have visual presentations of what I expect of people for squatting, benching, and deadlifting. And putting that information out to individuals, that's the first step. Second step is they go into their workout, they have to record themselves. If they don't feel comfortable doing that, if you so don't you feel can comfortable- see it. So exactly. you can see it. Exactly. And make the adjustment if And needed. then I can see it. Okay, if you record yourself and you just say, hey, I squatted, you're hiring me because you don't know what you're doing. Right. I can look at your squat and say, dude, you're screwing this up, you're not hip hinging properly, try this movement of a regression so that you can progress your squat. So I am constantly in contact on making a weekly, daily basis, making adjustments through Instagram, or through Instagram, because some people like to use Instagram as a training log, That's like fine. I do, so you can look back, I do text messaging, emailing, FaceTiming, like any type of connection that I can have with my clients on a personal basis, it's gonna happen. I have email strands from one workout that range anywhere from 20 emails to 30 off of one workout just to try and get the communication down so they can progress. When you are hiring an online trainer and you see a video, like what he's doing, like your blood pressure's through the roof right now. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if any I'm of you guys that, but he's like right now, I kind of backed off yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you see someone talking about what they do that passionately, mm -hmm. take note of that, take heed of that. When you watch the Instagram girl who's 17, yeah. who's like, you know, all of a sudden they're dropping bombs on you about fitness, right? Because they saw it on someone else, they saw it on your page, and then they take it off and they go, rip it. That's that outer bubble. And then, you, and then you see bubble. a video of them talking, oh, hey, everybody, you know, sign up. Yeah. You gotta be leery of that, man. I, I don't wanna hate on them, but you gotta be leery of that. They're, they're, they don't get this passionate. They're not talking about those details. And there's details, that's why you hire a coach. To iron out the details, to give, yes. you, to give you a program. Now, we'll be back in two seconds to wrap this one up. We've got some good stuff coming. All right, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. You're in a very, very in-depth interview right here with Christian Anto, and we have my boy Blair Hargrove Sir. in the building of Gorilla Gains. Is there still Gorilla Gains? Oh, yeah. He's got the shirt. You see the shirt, you guys. You can order Girl, it online. What are they? Thou in. Thousand bucks a shirt? Thousand and four. Fifteen hundred a shirt. So we're gonna do a speed round of questions for Christian, because he's a vault of information. So let's let's get this rocking and rolling. Oh, man. When people talk about you have to muscle confusion, can you give yourself muscle confusion doing the same movement but training through different styles? Of training so let's say a flat bench okay three weeks in a row yes can I create muscle confusion other than doing different movements can I keep benching but can I do speed work can I do uh, reverse band work can I do pause work can I change it through the velocity can I change it through the sets and reps and loads and volume yes and I'm gonna say just basic I hate the word muscle confusion it's changing the stimulus peace muscle confusion okay? it's a stimulus you have Three variables of strength, repetition, speed, and max effort. Stick with those, there's your muscle confusion if you want to call it that. So you don't have to use a BOSU ball? No, okay. I don't, I blow them up, set them on fire. For all next, next question, <laughs> your favorite lift to hit every week? Uh, squats. Wow. Why do, you think, why do you think most guys hate squatting? Because they suck at it. <laughs> all right, what is your favorite training movement that you do with your future wife? Man. Most fun as a couple. Squatting. I was gonna say squatting. It's, it's squatting. gotta be squatting. Yeah, if you look at my Instagram videos, yeah. you'll, you can tell we have the most fun when we squat. We have the most, uh, we, we have the most irritability when we deadlift. Not within each other, <laughs> just of the, the workout day. The workout day right. itself. Yeah. Love it. Moving on, next question. Favorite or most impactful moment in your training history in the gym? Doesn't have to be necessarily workout related. Biggest thing that 
training has done for you in your whole life? I got one. Man. So it wasn't training in general. It was accumulation. The day that I got a package in the mail addressed to me from Elite FTS and them giving me the opportunity to sponsor uh, Dave's company. That recognition. That's and it, it wasn't even about the recognition. It was the to be, a part of it. to be a part of it. And when I walked in the gym, we had Elite FTS banners hanging. This is before I even knew about powerlifting and I thought it was ridiculous. Right when I walked into that gym, I said I wanted to be a part of what they were doing after seeing the website and the day that it happened, it was, it was I, that, that's all I need. Like, I don't care about any other company in the fitness industry. If I can, if I can progress what they're trying to do, I'm, I'm, I'm happy yeah, to do it. Yeah. I like it. So right. then, next, next question. My question would be, what is, what is the most common thing you see amongst new, new clients, new athletes? What, like, the most thing you have to correct, usually? So the, the most common phrase is that I've heard after working with someone is, I've been doing this wrong for X amount of time. Literally, I've, I've, yeah. and that's from athletes, people that have been in the industry for 20, 30 years doing powerlifting, or people that have never done it before. I've been doing it wrong for this long. What was the second part of that question? Um, Just the most common, yeah. most common thing. Uh, that most common wrong. people yeah. not knowing how to stack and they have absolutely no body awareness of pelvis position and how to breathe properly. Ah, breathing. Breathing that, that and pelvic, movement. That pelvic tilt, that's, that's a lot, that's, that's big. Number one tip for somebody who's just trying to start living a healthier lifestyle. Maybe it never worked out, maybe overweight, maybe intimidated by the gym. What would you tell them? Just what would be the one thing you'd say to them? Work on one variable at a time because one variable that you choose can have a domino effect or a hierarchy you could be fixing the top of the hierarchy chain and a bunch of other things are gonna fix itself underneath it. So like fix diet or yep. fix workouts and then it'll come with it? Yes, but only fix one variable because if you just say diet, you have 150 variables underneath diet that you can look at. Pick to one easy variable, hone in on that variable and then move on to the next one. How important is food to anyone who wants to improve themselves physically? It's just as important as energy expenditure like you if you have a million dollar car you're not gonna put really cheap gas in it okay if you expect to perform better you have to fuel your body that is a is an organism that needs energy you don't want to give it crap energy biggest mistake you've made in your professional training career that you could fix man for a strength coach that's out there you actually might have me on this one. I um, might have him stumped, ladies and gentlemen. I think I got him on this one. The wheels are turning. The blood pressure has how, went down. What would I fix? What's one thing you would change that you that you that you slipped on? Even if you did get something valuable out of the mistake. Jeez, there's so many. Give me one. I have him stumped on this one. We're moving on. Okay. Moving on. How, how, how do you value sleep? Oh, man. A ton. It's like it, it's number one performance variable is sleep. Sleep is the number one performance variable. I like that. Beyond everything else. Do you have a guideline? Seven? At least. At the minimum, at seven. At least. And then that's going to be hard for some athletes because I understand athletes' training regimens are really crazy. That's where naps come in. Like, nap. Nap. Tip, biggest tip for a football player? <laughs> eat and sleep. <laughs> beyond, Seriously, beyond the lift. E eat and sleep. Eat and sleep. I, there's pictures on my Instagram of people taking pictures next to me while I was sleeping, sitting up in a chair prior to lifting. It's not at a competition. I'm talking regular training day. Uh, I'm sleeping. at the facility. I'm I, getting I've ready seen to lift. I've seen the picture. I'm just sitting in a chair just with my head down. Slumped over. Seat. I'm still busted up on not being able to answer that question. Biggest mistake. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm going to answer going. that question in the back of my head. Favorite music to listen to while you train? Oh, man. You're going to make me sound weird. I like I like hip-hop, but I don't Mariah care Mariah Carey. The, yeah. Yeah. I like hip hop, but I don't care for the lyrics. I right. like like trance, you like the beat? techno, beat house, stuff. house music. Yeah, I like okay. it really upbeat. I like it loud. I don't mind rap. Like Fast. this environment here is amazing to me. Okay, like, so you, you don't I, mind. I don't know if you can hear this, but this room is shaking right yeah. now because we have the beats going on. We keep on in it the a little louder here. It's Tal, legit. Yeah. 
Like yeah. you walk, I heard it outside before yeah. I walked in. Right. And I'm like, it automatically, it's, it literally is the thermometer. You walk in and this guy has the temperature turned up. Yeah. You can't help but walk in here and be ready to go. And like one of the first times I came in here ever, one of the first times I ever came in here to intern, I was trying to figure out which place it was because the, the sign's not very big. It's more so on the door, like when away. you see it. Yeah. So I pull in and I'm like, let me text him. I don't know where. Wait, what is that? Is that Tupac? Boom, <laughs> boom, <laughs> boom. You just hear the bass just knocking. I'm like, oh, I'm guessing this is probably yeah. the spot. They're like, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's either that or the people doing uh, West Side GPP in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah. Up and down, with dragon sleds <laughs> yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Shout outs to Louie. I got it. He's, got the, he's question, got the biggest mistake. Let's biggest get it. Biggest mistake was not investing and spending money to fly out to other strength coaches for continuing education. Staying in his comfort zone. Yes. And not spending money. Yep. Two of the biggest things that are going to kill you, no matter what area you are in life. Mm-hmm. Spend money and get out of your comfort zone. I love it. <laughs> Christian, my man. Pleasure as always. I love this interview. It's good. It's full of value. Yeah. Chalk full of value. Sure. Help people out. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, this wasn't a show. No. Normally we have the show up there. We're representing Top Line Athlete University. Why not? Give it a little plug here. Yes. Break out your wallets, break out your credit cards, pull on your pull on your parents' sleeves, make sure that they're ready to get you in here. If you're a football player in Wisconsin, college, high school, youth, this is the place you want to be. That's all I got. Thank you, Christian Antel, for coming in here. Yes, sir. Blair Hargrove for showing off a little bit, showing off the dreads a little bit. I got you still got hair, right? I do. You got hair? I got a mohawk. Mohawk, baby. Mohawks, dreads, and then a bald guy. There's always a bald guy. There's always a bald guy in the equation. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, let us know. This will be in long-form content on IGTV and YouTube and everything else, chopped up in a little bitty pieces on Instagram. We'll see you guys soon. Hey, thank you guys for tuning in and checking this one out. I hope you guys got some good information out of it. Again, that is our main objective is to be able to encourage you guys, motivate you guys, but also educate you guys a little bit so you can become not only better strength and conditioning coaches and personal trainers, but also if you're a client, you can get a better understanding of where your coaches are at in their thought process. I hope you guys have an awesome and amazing rest of the day. Thank you again for tuning in to the Brett Summers Podcast. We'll catch you later. Oh, and don't forget, like, subscribe, share, and comment on this so we can uh, bump ourselves up the ranking, especially if it helped you out and help us out in return. Catch you later. Oh, ring the bell too. See you later.